Good morning, all of my creative friends. Happy Friday. Welcome to my Friday coffee and a card. Um, it is Friday, November 10th, 2023. I'm hopping on just a few seconds late because I saw UPS pull up. I'm not sure what they're delivering because I don't remember ordering, but I'm sure I did. I'm sure I did. So um, anyway, it is coolish here today. Uh, after we had rain yesterday afternoon and all night, um, we woke up to clouds this morning. It's cloudy. It's breezy. Only going to get up to about 60 degrees today. So that is on the coolish side. I'm going to chat for just a minute because I don't see anyone popping on yet. And that's unusual. Um, I want to be sure that I'm up and running and sure that I'm in the right place. So I'm going to give it just a second here. And hopefully we will gather more people. Oh, looks like someone is on. So if you are here, please say hi and let me know that. I would love to know that you're on watching. Um, I actually went out this morning to take my mail out without a sweater on. You can see I have one on now. It was cold, so um, I put my sweater on. Hi, Francis. Glad you're here. And I'm feeling much better. My name is Maureen Ralphus, also known as the Crazy Stamping Lady. I hope you've grabbed your favorite beverage and you can sit with me for a while while we have some creative fun. I'm coming to you from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Um, I have been an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator for over 26 years and I love what I do. Oh, Lois, I'm sorry to hear about the pneumonia. That's awful. Glad you are recovering and you're here. Hi, Lenny. Glad you're on. Um, I'm here to help you learn the joy of card making. That is the honest truth. It has been a godsend for me. I love it. It has kept me sane through the years. Um, and for me, it's a ministry to not only make the cards, but then to go and share those cards with other people and bring joy to them. So I hope I can share that joy with you a little bit this morning. Uh, not sure if any of you had a chance to catch me on the Global Share Fair group yesterday. A global, not the share for sorry, global inspiration stamp team group. Um, I was there yesterday. I was the ninth day of Christmas and I had a couple videos. I shared some treat holders and a holiday planner. So if you're part of that group and didn't get on there, please go back and watch those videos. Um, I had hoped to get one more project in, but with the rain, we ended up running late for the day and it just didn't happen. So maybe I'll share that project here sometime soon. We'll see. Okay, as always, I will be drawing from all of the comments that you make on this video and giving away the project that I'm making today. I love to hear from you. Your comments are what make this all worthwhile to me. So be sure to comment as many times as you like about anything you like. I can always delete it if I don't like it, right? So um, that's what happens when I'm in charge. I get to delete, but I don't do that unless it's some scammer or someone weird guy trying to ask me out on a Date. I don't delete those. So good morning, Stephanie. Glad you are here. Um, I do love to know what you think. Any comments entered today through midnight tomorrow, November 11th will be entered and I will draw the following morning and give away the card that I make to the lucky winner. Congratulations to my last winner, Linda Marshall. You won that Aspen Trees card that I made last time, and that is on its way to you in the mail. Enjoy it. Thank you for watching and commenting. Um, also, if you can share my video, either to your own homepage or to a crafty group, or even to a single crafty friend. That gets me exposure I wouldn't otherwise get to new people that want to learn about the art of stamping. So please do that and let me know, and I will give you a bonus entry toward the card that I'm giving away today. That means the world to me when you can do that for me. All right, I'm going to take you down to my table. You will see the cloudiness outside because it is a bit cool, like I mentioned. And we're just going to go right down... And hopefully I'm in the right place. It's been working pretty good since I don't really have to move my setup anymore, which is super nice. This is me, Maureen Rolfus, also known as the Crazy Stamping Lady. My blog is crazystampinglady.blogspot.com. 
My email is crazystampinglady at gmail.com. You can find me on Facebook right where you are at facebook.com forward slash crazystampinglady. My YouTube is under my name, Maureen Ralphus, and you can shop with me at stampingwithmaureen.stampinup.net. Here is my November hostess code. If you are ordering from me in the month of November, please use that code. Um, some of my giveaways, like my free virtual class, etc., only go if you use that code. The only exception is if your order is over $150 pre-shipping and handling and tax, then don't use the code because you will earn hostess rewards. So at that point, I don't want you using it and I will still give you all the benefits. But anything under that, unless it uses the code, um, it doesn't qualify for the free class that I do each month. So please use that hostess code. It, that also helps assure that you're shopping with me because that hostess code is attached to my name couple fun cards to share today that I received. This first one is from my friend Lenny. It is like a little kind of Z-fold card and it uses that amazing new paper pack, Meandering Meadows, from the current online exclusives. It is so pretty and yellow is my favorite color. Lenny, I don't know if you remembered that or if it just happened to work out that way. But I love this. Look how simple and how easy and how beautiful that paper does so much of the work for you. So it is a must have for sure. And that just came out and it's on the online exclusives. And then I got another card. This one is from my friend Lori. Um, and Lori sent me like a three page letter. Lori, thank you for keeping me in the loop on what's happening back in Prescott. I miss you guys all so much. Um, she did this card and she said it was a perfect card for me. This card is all about you. Autumn leaves and coffee and it just says leaves are falling and coffee is calling. Look how pretty that is with the sparkle and shine from that copper. I love it, Lori. Thank you so, so very much for thinking of me. And then just a reminder that it's gift certificate time. So if you are interested in purchasing a gift certificate for someone for the holidays, or if you want to drop a suggestion to a partner or a child or a friend that maybe you would like a gift certificate, just have them contact me. Um, if they order a certificate for you, it's good for one year, so you have a whole year to spend it. It'll come in a beautiful folder similar to this. I have several different colors and designs, but it'll be similar packaging. It has a belly band you slide off, and then when you open it up inside, it'll have the gift certificate that you can redeem with me. And you do not have to give it to me, so you can order. You would just have to email me, let me know you have a gift certificate, when you received it and who it was from. And then I will give you credit for that and clear the gift certificate. So let me know if you are interested in those. I do need um, a little wiggle time on them, not to make them because I have several made up, but to get them in the mail on time for the holidays. So you really need to order probably by December 10th to assure that you will have it for Christmas. Um, and that's on my end. Who knows what the mail, but they've been pretty good. And they're saying that would be plenty of time. So, okay, that is my gift certificates. Merry and Bright Bundle is my bundle bonus this month. Um, it was last month too because I came in late in the month. If you purchase this bundle in the month of November, I will give 100% of my profits to the Doors of Hope Ministry in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. It is an incredible ministry. You can find out more about them at opendoorsofhope.org if you're interested. You will also receive a tutorial bundle from me with additional projects that you can make if you order this this month. And you must use my hostess code for that. Also, my free monthly virtual card class. So if you place an order with me during the month of November and use my hostess code, a $50 order is going to get you three free card kits. A $75 order will get you the three card kits plus a bonus project. And a $100 order will get you the three card kits, a bonus project, and half of a package of current embellishments. Um, those will go out to you automatically if you order this month on December 1st. 
And then on December 11th, that's a Monday at 11 o'clock in the morning, I will be doing a free card class that you're welcome to join. Anyone can watch it. It's on my Facebook page, but you will have the kits to see how I put them together and you can put them together with me at that time if you want, or you can just watch and then put them together after and you can always go back and watch that video. So that is my current virtual card class. And then just a reminder that catalogs are coming out for the January to April catalog. Um, and I am putting together my mailing list for that. Anyone who purchased from me between June 1st and November 28th of this year will get that catalog in the mail automatically coming from Stampin' Up. I will order it and make sure it is sent to you. If you're not sure if you've ordered already and you want to check on it, just drop me an email at crazystampinglady at gmail.com and I will check that for you. Um, or if you want to be sure you get a catalog, just order from me by November 28th because on the 29th I will be finalizing that. I never like to wait till the very last day because sometimes there's glitches in the system and I want to be sure I get those catalogs in there and finalize. So the 28th is the last day you can order from me to assure that you will get the January to April catalog in the mail. That will come to you in the month of December and you'll be ready to order in January. Also, be aware that when I send out prizes or catalogs or anything like that, It'll be sent to the most recent address you used on Stampin' Up. So if your address has changed, um, please let me know that because I want to be sure you get your catalog. And if you haven't changed that address online, it's not going to get to you. So if you've had a recent change of address that I don't know about, um, let me know. Or if you're not sure if your address is correct, go into your account and check it to make sure it is up to date mini catalog is still going on we're not really using anything out of here today so i'm not going to go through it things are starting to run out so i think we have three or four products no longer available and that will happen now through december as things run out because it's really too late to get them back in stock on time so if there's something you love now is the time to order it and then our annual catalog this catalog goes through next April, and we are using sentiments out of here today, out of one of my favorite holiday sentiment sets. I've showed you this a few times. It is the brightest glow stamp set, and I'm gonna be pulling my sentiments for my card out of here today. So that is on page 42 of the annual catalog. It is a must have, it is wonderful. The sentiments are beautiful. All right. So, for today, we're going to make a bridge card. I'm not going to show you it ahead of time. We're going to make it together because I'm going to show you how I come up with my designs and everything. We're going to be using the One Horse Open Sleigh Designer Series Paper. It is 6 by 6 paper. It is an online exclusive. So, you have to go to stampinup.com, hit that shop key, and then look at online exclusives, and you will find this in there. Those are products that are not in our catalogs. They are in addition to the catalog, but you can order them, and they are fantastic. So we're using this paper today as well as, let me just grab it since I'm talking about this. Let me get it out here. As well as our adhesive-backed snowflake assortment. These are both online exclusive products. They were both available as of this morning. Um, so I'm just letting you know, I know they sold out, I think earlier and both came back, but they will not continue to come back most likely after the holidays. Um, at least I'm thinking they won't. So this is what we're using today. I'm going to show you the papers because I think they are just so gorgeous. So you know that paper that Lenny used, the Meandering Meadows, I think I showed you that a couple times ago. That is also an online exclusive. It shows all the beautiful scenery. That would work perfectly for the card I'm making today as well as these. So these are the papers that are in that One Horse Open Sleigh Designer Series paper packet. Three, four, five, six. Look how beautiful these are. I'm gonna turn these over so you can see the backs. 
The backs are more neutral, could be used pretty much year round. Lots of reds for the holidays, so can also be used for that. So that is six of the designs, but there's six more. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And I'm also going to show you the backs of these. So there you go. These are a little bit darker and more neutral, but beautiful. I love that when the holidays are over, you can still use the backside for the entire year and they will work great on your projects. Love, love that Stampin' Up! does that. Now we're making a bridge card today, a really simple bridge card. And I will give you the measurements and information on that. But pretty much any of these designs would work for this card um, the way I'm making it. I'm letting the scenic part of these papers do all of the work for me. They are so elegant and so beautiful that I can make up holiday cards in no time at all, add a sentiment and a couple embellishments, and we are good to go. So we're going to use on the card I'm making today this pattern. And I'm going to show you how I decide what parts to use for my card. So actually, I am going to show you the card I made ahead of time, just because I think it'll help me explain my process here. So let me grab that. I wasn't going to show it to the end, but I'm going to show it now. So this is the bridge card I used using one of the other designs. The bridge just means it has this little banner across the front that helps it to stand up when it's being displayed. I think it is gorgeous. You notice I just added some snowflakes and a bow and a sentiment and that is all it needed. These cards are super cool. On the back, I just put a little place with a sentiment where you could write to your recipient. They fold up flat like this and will go into one of our regular envelopes. So I love that about them. And as soon as your recipient pulls it out, it is very intuitive that this just pops up and they have their card. So this is the card we're making today. This actually takes four inches by four and three quarter inches of designer series paper to make this. So I'm gonna show you how I decide when I am looking at a scene like this, what part of the design to use. And I used to just use a ruler and lay it there and try to figure it out. But I saw another demonstrator, not for this kind of card, but for another one, um, show how she finds the area of the DSP she likes. And I loved the idea so much. I'm going to share it with you. Because I am using a four inch by four and three quarter inch piece of paper, designer series paper for this, I just cut out that size out of a piece of grid paper. So this opening is now four inches tall by four and three quarters wide. And I can take it and lay it on my picture and decide where, what part of this I want to use. So I'm not gonna go way down to the bottom because if I do that and come down here, I'm cutting off the top of my house. And I don't want to go all the way up to the top because then I think some of my image is gonna get hidden behind that bridge on here. So I'm coming more to the middle, and then I marked two one inch spots, cause that's where I'm gonna cut these designer series paper to do these little strips on the side. And I wanna be sure that I'm not cutting in a spot that looks funny. I want those strips to look beautiful on their own. So I'm looking at this when I come in, and I want to keep this whole house image in my middle section, which is what I'm doing right here. So I'm going to come in here and make sure this is straight. And I can use my grid paper on my um, pad here to kind of make sure that this all lines up pretty straight. And I am going to cut out this section and then use this strip for one front and this strip for one front and this for the middle. And to do that, I'm gonna take a pencil. So I just have a pencil with an eraser here and I'm gonna draw a line here and I'm gonna draw a line here and a line 
here and one more over here just like that so I know where I want to cut okay so let's get this out of the way to give me some room these are easy to make you can make them for any cards that you're trying to decide what part of your paper to use and scenery cards are always that way you're going to want to pick so make them change the template to the size you need and use them okay let me grab my paper cutter and the first thing I'm going to do is just cut off that bottom section. So I'm just lining up my pencil mark with the little groove in here, or pretty close. It doesn't have to be totally exact, but I'm going to line it up pretty close. And we're going to come and cut that bottom section off just like that. And then I'm going to come and do, I think, the top section right away too and get those done because when I cut this scene apart, I wanna keep my pieces in order for on here. So let me make sure this is at four, because that's what I need coming here with my cutter. All right, so now you can see when I actually measured it on my thing, I actually did my groove there, that was wrong. Um, there's a little bit of a pencil mark. I'm gonna come in and erase that. I like to use a white eraser because that erases without leaving any marks on your paper. And then I did accidentally use my score piece first here. I don't know if you saw me do that when I was doing it. So I'm gonna take my bone folder, flip this around, and just kind of smooth that out because I made that mistake and I don't want that little mark showing. It's very light and no one would probably notice it, but that helps smooth it out a little bit. So that's the best I can do with that. Um, so I'm gonna get rid of the two side pieces on here next so let's get this lined up with my pencil mark again get this on screen here for you and i'm going to cut that one off and then i want to be sure that this is four and three quarters so i'm that's what i did wrong last time i want to make sure i'm going to move this over so it's four and three quarters because that's the size I need. It should be close to that mark, and it's going to be, but it's a little further. So, Because I drew inside of that grid, and that's why it comes in just a little bit further. But that's okay. So now we have this. I do have pencil marks again, so I'm gonna get rid of those because we don't need them anymore. I do love these white erasers. I buy them at back to school time in packs of like 10. And they work better than anything else I have found to get rid of your pencil marks and not leave any kind of residue on your paper. Okay, so this is our scene. This is what we're using for our card today. So now for my panels, I am going to need a one inch piece, a two and three quarter inch piece, and a one inch piece. And I'm gonna start this way. So I'm just gonna move this, I gotta get this on here. Move this so I have it at the one inch, because that's the first one I need. Make sure it's straight, that moved a little bit. So just take a moment. You know, these things are easy. People say, why doesn't my card look real nice? Or why is it all? Just take a minute, make sure it's straight. Think about what you're doing. So that's going to be the panel for the leftmost part, no, for the rightmost part of this card. I can get my rights and lefts together I've got it and then my next panel is going to be two and three quarters so I'm going to move that over there and take that off well oh, there's my score blade again I don't know why I'm getting that mixed up today but I am so there's my center panel and then this is one inch it measures perfectly and this is going to be my left panel for my card so you just kind of want to keep those in order so I'm going to set them over here that way Okay, and then the next thing I need is for my bridge, I am going to be needing a designer series paper strip that is three quarters by five and a quarter. And I'm going to use that bottom piece that I cut off of this paper because I want it going horizontal on my strip and that's what this is. And it continues that scenery. I'm not worried about it matching up perfectly with the image above because it is just a strip that I want to coordinate. So I'm going to come in here and just at five and a quarter inches, cut this off. 
So I have this little bitty piece here. And then I'm gonna cut this one. I see there's some pencil mark on here. Let me get rid of that. I'm gonna cut this piece to the three quarters that I need. So let me come in here on my grid one more time, just like that. And I have this. So this will be my strip across the bottom. The rest of these pieces are left. And I will probably not throw them away. Um, you could use a piece across the back by where you put your little uh, message if you wanted to do it. But I will keep them because I like the other strips and I can do something with these on a card. So they are good enough for me to keep. Some people throw them away. Um, on our share fair this weekend, one of the other demonstrators gave a wonderful tip and I loved it. And I'm going to share it with you right now with Sandra. And she said she buys our clear Stella envelopes that are like this. And when she gets small pieces of her designer series paper that she wants to hang on to, she just drops them in that cello envelope. And then she takes that cello envelope that she has and places it inside of her package of paper. And that way, all those little pieces are kept together in one spot. It was the best tip I had heard in a long time, and I've started doing it with all of my packs of paper. Um, so yeah, so that is going to be kept in there with those little pieces. All right, we are done cutting, I'm pretty sure, but we need to score. So we're going to score. Okay, so we have all our pieces now. I am going to score this. So our base for this card is eight inches you're going to cut one quarter inch or one half inch off the side and i already did that i'm pretty sure let me make sure i cut that pretty sure that i did eight inches yeah so i cut that off so this is eight inches wide by four and a quarter tall and we're going to score it and we're scoring this at actually let me get this blade down here sorry remember I'm using my score blade now when I want it we're scoring this at one and a quarter and at two and a half and I will post all these measurements after in the comments so I mean not in the comments in the description so they'll be there for you and then at five and a half And then at six and three quarters. So let me pull my little arm out here so I have that. The last one is at six and three quarters, which is right here. So these are actually equal measurements on each side. It's one and a quarter, two and a half, one and a quarter, and then two and a half. So if you didn't want to do it the way I did, you could have just flipped it around and done the, done the other edge. Either one will work. All right cutter is out of the way. We're going to score this with the bone folder. I always try to fold toward the bumps first. So this side has the bump on it. And when I scored, it should be straight, but I try to make sure that my edges are even. I'm going to take my bone folder and score that down. Do the next one. And come on the other side and do the same thing. Okay, and then just like when I do my cards, right now you can see a lot of the broken fiber on here. So I'm gonna go back and score them the other direction. So I'm folding these now toward the crease side. And again, you do not have to do this. It's just something I try to do to get a really nice creased image on the front side of my paper. Okay. So now we have those. This is going to fold together like this and fold open to stand like that. And we're just gonna decorate it. So I'm gonna grab my pieces of designer series paper. And I know I told you I was gonna keep them in order, <laughs> but I messed up. So let me make sure, is this the way to go? I think it's the opposite. Yep, this way. Okay, so I did get them out of order, but you can put it back together. It's like a puzzle. Look at that. I did that without too much trouble. We're going to take our first panel, put seal on the back of it, 
See if I can get my seal to work. It's one of those days it's a little cold in here. So my seal might be fussy, and if I use my take your pick tool, it might be a little fussy when it gets cold. Um, I love my new craft room, love it. But it is full of windows. And because of that, the coolness does seep in. So I'm just gonna center this on that very first panel there. Just like that. Then we're gonna use our medium one. Because this is six inch paper, it's not wide enough to do all five panels. So I'm skipping two of them and just leaving them the cardstock to coordinate. Um, if you were using a larger piece of designer series paper, you could also cut a one inch panel for all of those and that would work too. But I think the way these came together was so beautiful that I'm okay with them just being a solid color on the side. It kind of sets off the image to me a little bit. All right, so there is that. And then our last one. Actually, the seal is cooperating much more than I thought it would when, uh, when it's cool in here like this. So, all right, and this is gonna be our third panel down here on the end. Okay. So now you can see when I laid that out and tried to figure out how I wanted these panels to not have like a half a house on it or anything and I wanted the house to be in the middle. Um, when this folds together, that's how it folds. When it stands up, it looks like that. And we're gonna do our bridge for this. So this is our piece for the bridge. It is a strip of cardstock that is one inch wide by five and a half. And we're gonna attach it just on these two end pieces. Um, and when I attach it, I want one to be folded in and one to be laid out. That way it is the five and a half inch length that I need. And I only wanna attach it on those ends. Also, because it is a moving piece, like this is gonna shift back and forth as you open your card, I'm gonna use our tear and tape. I love our tear and tape. You could use the extra sticky seal. Um, you could use seal. It just has a better chance of coming apart as you use your card. And since I just want it on the ends, I'm just gonna lay three small pieces right next to each other on here. And if you do three of them, they will fit within that area and you won't have too much exposed. We're gonna do the same thing on this end, three strips. And I love that our tear and tape tears so easily. We used to have the pink tape, which I was just loved. It worked great for holding things together, but you had to cut it with the scissors. And this one, I can just tear just like that. I'm gonna use my bone folder and come in here and burnish those ends down on both sides here and I do that just to help that backing peel off and then I'm going to use the end of my snips and I just run it along and it'll pick up that backing and I can take it right off by burnishing it it kind of releases the glue from this backing piece and makes it easier for my snip to come in here and pick that up do the same thing on this end And I'm just doing three of them to be sure. Um, I really want this to hold together and that's really not that much tear tape. It's just three different short pieces. So by doing three, I'm sure this isn't gonna go anywhere once it's together. Okay, so there we are. We have our tape on the back. I'm gonna fold this in and place it where I want it. Well, it looks like I have a little glue sticking over. So if you have any glue sticking over the edge, just roll it back before you tape it down. Okay, so we're gonna come over here and I'm going to lay it down below this kind of bridge on here because I want that bridge to completely show, but I want a little bit of the paper showing at the bottom. So I'm probably leaving about a quarter inch at the bottom here, I'm laying that down, making sure my card is out flat, running my finger across to keep it straight and gluing it there. So now when you do that, your card should fold back and forth perfectly without any gapping or problems. And if this piece is a little too long, 
it's going to stick over on that one end. Just come back in with your snips and snip that off. Because you know when you're cutting, it's never perfect. Um, at least for me, it's never perfect. All right, so there is our bridge on this card. Now we're going to take that other piece of designer series paper and place it right onto that bridge. I'm just going to do one strip down the middle for this, and that will hold it. It's not going to go anywhere. And I'm going to center it on there, making sure that my grass is going the right direction because there is grass on there. The rest is snow, but I want my grass to be going the correct direction. Let's see if I can get that centered pretty straight. All right, and I'm going to take my bone folder and just burnish that down on there too. So now we have our bridge, easy peasy. And then I'm gonna stamp a sentiment. So I'm stamping the sentiment from um, that set that I mentioned earlier that I already lost out of the catalog, but it is gorgeous. And I'm gonna get this out of the way. I'm gonna stamp it onto this small piece of paper. So this little piece here is about a half inch by two and a half and our sentiment just fits on it, so hopefully this will go well. I'm gonna take Pool Party, because that's a coordinating color, and that's what I used for my base. And you can always find your coordinating colors right on the back of the Designer Series paper. It'll tell you what colors they used in there. I'm gonna ink this up. I'll come in here and do my best to get this straight on to this piece. And I'm going to hold it a second for the color to transfer. Oh, perfect. So Pool Party is kind of a light color. It's gorgeous. I love it. Um, but you want to make sure that you get it inked up well so it's going to show well on your card. And we're going to add this to the front of our card, kind of over here to this side. So it says, to you and yours this Christmas. And we'll just place this here. And I made it thin enough so that some of my designer series paper still shows around it, which I liked. Um, I could have made this layer a little bit bigger, but it covered that and I wanted that to show. So that's the front. And then we're gonna take a piece of basic white cardstock for the back that is two and three quarters by four inches. And I'm gonna stamp my other sentiment. And this one says, May the peace of the season light your world and may your new year be the brightest. How awesome is that? So I'm gonna again, ink this up on really well because it is that lighter color. And we're gonna come in here and I'm gonna center it toward the top on this piece of cardstock. Let it set for a minute for that ink to transfer. Oh, I think that is so beautiful. I love the sentiment, I love the script in there. I just love everything about it. We're going to add this to the back of our card. Now, when you put it on here, you can still write on here to send it out, which is really nice because you can lay it flat like this and then it will pop back up. So we're just going to add it to the back here. Also, that kind of hides your sentiment. If they're displaying it, it keeps it on the back of the card. Um, of course, it's so beautiful. Someone's probably going to come and pick it up and look. But if you just want your sentiment to be a little private, that allows that by putting it on the back. We're going to come in here, center that. So now that's the back of the card, just like that. This is the front of the card. And all we have to do is add a few embellishments. So let me grab those snowflakes. And I think on this one, because that cabin door is a little bit on that coppery side, I think I'm gonna try the copper snowflakes. I haven't used them yet. So we're gonna see how they look. Hopefully they will look wonderful and add a little bit of color to this. So I'm just gonna grab this one and we're gonna lay it down here. Let me flatten that. Coming right off the edge of the sentiment and onto that bridge. And then I'm going to add one of, there's three different kinds of snowflakes in here. You can see there's the large design, a medium design, and a small. So I'm gonna take one of the larger ones and pick it up. And I find my take your pick tool 
doesn't work really great on flat embellishments. You could use the pokey end if you wanted or the spatula end, but I usually just use my snips because they're already in my hand from what I've been working on. And I'm gonna lay this one up here coming off the top of that sentiment. You just wanna make sure your adhesive, which is right in the middle, is completely um, on the card part and not sticking over where you don't want it, if that makes sense, hopefully. And then we're gonna use a couple small ones. So let me grab one of these tiny ones. Um, and we're gonna place that just up here, like, come on off little guy, just like that. And then another one of these tinier ones. For some reason, this one on the bottom doesn't have a hole in the middle like all the rest. I'm not sure, that's very strange. Um, but I'll keep that and use it somewhere where it's not as obvious. Like maybe I'm just using the one small one on that design. We're gonna take this one here and put it up here like it's coming down onto these trees like that. And then one more of the large ones, so. Let's grab this if I can get it and poke that underneath just like that. And we'll add this one, yeah, kind of right up here. All right, so there is our snowflakes on there. I think the copper ones look really nice on there. They add a little bit of extra color to it, which is nice because it's a very soft, muted picture. And then we're going to add a bow. And for my bow, I'm going to use the Glittering Organdy Ribbon. This is also an online exclusive. We used to have it in the catalog. Now you can only get it on the online exclusives. And I'm just going to tie a bow. When I tie our bows, I tie them right off the spool. That way I waste the least amount of ribbon. Unless I'm in a class, then of course I'll give you a link or I'll tie them ahead of time. Um, but when I'm making them here, I usually tie them right off the spool. And then I'm gonna take my ribbon cutting scissors, which everyone needs to have one. If you don't have one, invest in one, trust me. You wanna have your ribbons cut nice and sharp like that. And if you're using the same snips you're using for paper, it is gonna get worn down and not give you quite as nice of a cut. And then let me grab my glue dots, glue dots. Boy, the sun's coming out outside. I wasn't expecting that. It said it was gonna be a cloudy day, but I see some sunshine out there. That makes me happy. Maybe it'll get a little warmer than they predicted. We're gonna come in here with our bow, and I'm just gonna put it right at the edge of this um, piece right here, like that, and add that little bit of sparkle to the front of our card. So that's our card, guys. I am done. I will post all the measurements. It is quick and easy, honestly. Once you get the hang of it, it took a little longer today because I was showing you how I figure out the design part. But once you have a little template like this, it makes it so much easier to find the spot you want to cut out. Um, so this is the card I'm giving away. Leave me your comments. Let me know what you think. It'll fold flat. It'll go into our envelope just like I said, just like that. And you can send it off to someone else for the holidays. So thank you for joining me today. I plan to be back here on Tuesday at 1030. Mark your calendars and join me. Um, also, there's a couple more days left on our Global Inspiration Stamp Team site of 12 Days of Christmas. That group is for my customers and team members only, but if you fall in one of those categories, let me know and I will give you an invite to come and watch that. Um, and I have a quick change up for my Monday virtual card class. So my November class is next Monday. I already had to move it for a conflict and it was supposed to be at 11 o'clock, but I'm gonna move it again. I'm gonna keep it on Monday but I'm gonna move it till two o'clock in the afternoon. And the reason is I received a very special invitation from my grandson, Miko, to attend the Thanksgiving dinner at his school. He's in first grade and it was an honor I could not pass up, so I have to bump this class. So my free virtual class will still be on Monday, but it won't be till two o'clock in the afternoon. I will send an email to everyone who received kits to make sure you know that. Um, and I apologize, I try not to change that class, but this month has just kind of gotten crazy and that's what I'm gonna do. As always, I would love to be your creative coach and demonstrator. If you have any questions at all, 
or if you need a catalog, let me know. Reach out to me in the comments of this video or by email at crazystampinglady@gmail.com, and we'll get that taken care of and I will answer your questions. And until I see you again, have a blessed day, a wonderful weekend, and take care everybody. Bye-bye.